When I visited Salt Lake City recently, I came across this gift set at a local shop and loved the idea so much that I wanted to share it with you guys. It was a hand-knitted washcloth paired with handmade soap and a little wooden soap holder, neatly tied together with a bit of jute string. So simple, so lovely. So in today's video, I'm going to share how you can recreate this look and we'll be making a crochet washcloth instead. For this gift set, you'll need a wooden soap dish, a pretty bar of soap, some jute string, and a cotton or cotton blend yarn to make your washcloth. Cotton is a good choice because it will retain its stitch definition and is less likely to pill or get fuzzy. The yarn I use is a cotton bamboo blend by Lion Brand. It's a weight three and requires a four millimeter hook. I really love this yarn, but be warned that it is a multiply yarn, meaning it has a lot of strands, so it did split often while I was working. If you're wanting to work this up quickly, I'd recommend getting a cotton yarn that is a weight four and requires a five to six millimeter hook. My washcloths did come out very soft and beautiful, but I just want to warn you about that. They took a lot longer than they should have. The stitch that I'm going to be teaching today is called the lemon peel and is constructed by alternating the single and double crochet. That's it. Super simple. The washcloths that you see in the video measure eight by eight and six by six. And if you alternate the colors and create a stripe, the lemon peel is actually the exact pattern as the houndstooth stitch. This is really gorgeous, but you will have a lot of ends to deal with. But a fun option is to leave them there. Just double knot them two by two and create a fringe. To begin, create a chain using a multiple of two plus one at the end. For example, for the eight by eight, I chained 32 plus one, which gave me a total of 33 chains. For the six by six, I did 28 chains plus one, give me a total of 29. Now this chain count will vary depending on what yarn and hook you're using. This is just a little guide to get you started. Once you've created your chain, create a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. In the next chain, add a double crochet. Now we're just going to alternate this back and forth. Single crochet, double crochet. Single crochet, double crochet. Continue all the way across. When you reach the end of the row, you want to see a double crochet for the very last stitch. Chain one and turn. This is the sequence we're going to be doing for every single row, starting with a single crochet and ending with a double. Single crochet into the top of the first stitch and now double crochet. And you're just going to continue doing this until you reach your desired height. With my yarn, this took about 21 rows for my six by six and about 27 rows for my eight by eight. Even though this is super easy to do, it can be easy to lose track sometimes. So here are a couple of things that really helped me. Just remember that the stitch below will always be the opposite of what you're working on. For example, when I'm making a single crochet, there will be a double crochet right underneath. If I'm working a double crochet, then there will be a single crochet underneath. Also pay attention to the shape of those stitches as you're working. Notice that the single crochet makes an O shape where the double looks more dense and thick. So if you're losing track, always remember that your double crochet is going to go into the circle and your single crochet is going to go into the dense stitches. I found this was much easier than trying to repeat single, double, single, double in my mind. If you want to make the houndstooth effect, just switch your colors after every row. To do this, before you complete your last double crochet, bring in your next color to complete that stitch, and then you can begin your next row. Chain one and turn. When you're finished, you can fasten off and call it good, or you can add a single crochet border to the edge. 
create three single crochets into the corner and then continue along the edge with single crochets. A good rule of thumb is to add two single crochets in the spaces where it looks like there was a double crochet and then a single crochet where a single crochet was made. For the top and bottom, I just added a single crochet into the top of every stitch and again three single crochets into each corner. If you like to count your stitches, that initial chain count is a good guide because we are completing a full square. When you're all finished, slip stitch into the very first stitch and fasten off. But if you want to create a hanger for your washcloth, slip stitch into the middle of your corner and then create a chain for the length that you want your hanger to be. Then slip stitch back into the same stitch and then fasten off. That's it. And now it's time to put everything together. I like to fold with the two sides inward and then fold in two. This sits perfectly on the dish. Place your soap on top and now it's time to tie it together. There might be an easier way to do this, but this is how I like to do it. First, I place everything upside down on the string. Pull it up and twist, then flip to the right side. And then I place the string under the existing strand before tying the ends together. Tie into a bow and then you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you give this a try. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.